Let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 will be our text today. And it says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto, unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both go together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to be able to gather together here on the internet. Lord, there may be many miles between each one of us, Lord, but we are together in one accord, Lord, and and your word promises that where two or three are gathered together, you will be in the midst, Lord. I just want to pray, God, that you will speak today. I pray, Lord, that this message will be a blessing. I pray, God, that you will uh, give me the unction to be able to, to preach this and uh, hold back whatever you will, Lord. And I just want to pray, God, that, that you will uh, have your way in this service and we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is a message that I prepared for uh, my preacher's class, and we do a preacher's class at my local church every Monday, and this was a message that I prepared last week for that class, and I just felt led of the Lord to share it with you today because uh, I really believe that this is important. And Pastor Dean, if you're watching, um, you're going to see this live tomorrow night at preacher's course, so you may see this twice. But anyway... Uh, we're talking today about a parable that Jesus spoke. Now, Matthew chapter 13 is where Jesus starts speaking in parables. You know, he used to speak plainly. But now there seems to be a, a time in his ministry where he's now speaking in parables, hopefully so that uh, the people will understand. And we understand that much of this context and much of these parables have to do with the future, the kingdom of God and, and Israel. But you know what? There are so many things that we can take from these passages spiritually and apply them to our Christian walk. And there are three points that I'd like to share with you today. And the first one being, what seeds are you sowing? What seeds are you sowing? If we look at our, our passage here, and we look at the words of Christ in verse 24, it says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Verse 24 says, sows good seed. It's my desire to sow good seed. And I hope it's your desire as well. You know, we need to reflect on what, we're, what seed are we planting. You know, we're all planting seed. You know, everywhere we go, everything that we do, we're planting seed. We're sharing seed. You know, and, and really, what, are we, what seeds are we planting? What type of fruit? We're going to talk about fruit here in a minute. But what type of fruit will come from the seed? That we're planting. Let's turn to Hosea chapter 10 just for a moment here. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. So sow righteously. So good seed. You know, seed produces plants. You know, I have planted grass seed. And we've planted little shrubs and things around our property to kind of make things look nice. And when we first moved into this house, the backyard was pretty well barren. There were large chunks of just dirt, dry dirt throughout the, the backyard. And, and it took a number of years, but I... I really raked up that soil and we bought good soil and we put down seed and now we've got a luscious green backyard. But really, 
All of that happened because of the seed that I planted. I went to the store and I specifically bought grass seed. Now, when I'm spreading grass seed, I'm not expecting a maple tree to grow. You know, I, I am very intentional. And if you're trying to grow grass, you have to be very intentional about what seed you're planting and where. Because it's very easy to get weeds. And unfortunately, we do have a bit of a weedy yard. But you know what? The weeds and the grass, they will grow. They will grow. But we need to be intentional about what seeds we're planting. Where are we going? What are we doing? What are we saying? What is our manner of life? What is our, our walk? What does it look like? You know, I've said it before here, and I'll say it again. The life of a Christian, your life is the only Bible that some people read. And now what are they getting out of that? What are they getting by watching you? If we look at Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5 talks a lot about uh, fruit and growing fruit and producing fruit. And I believe that we ought to produce fruit. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 22, says this. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That's our desire, isn't it? I want to walk in the Spirit. I don't want to walk in the flesh. I don't want to walk in a way that, that pleases the devil. I, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to walk in the Spirit. I want God to be pleased with me. Because verse 17 the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You know, you can't play both sides. You know, back in the Civil War, there was a man that decided he didn't want to get involved. He wanted to play it safe. He wanted to play both sides. So he decided he was going to put on a Yankee coat, and he was going to wear rebel pants. And he thought, you know what? I I'm going to be safe because I'm, I'm on both sides. I I'm... I'm I'm trying to be a friend to both, both sides. And really, after the battle, he was found dead. His Yankee coat was filled with rebel bullet holes, and his rebel pants were filled with Yankee bullet holes. <laughs> you can't sit on the fence. You have to take a side. Verse 18. But if he had been led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, we know this is a topic for another day, but we know today we're not under the law. We're under grace. Praise the Lord for that. We're not saved by keeping the law. We don't remain righteous unto God by keeping the law. It's just not the way it works. Why? Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So these are the tares, if you will. In the passage that we read, these are the tares. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, Seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. That's a big list. That, that's, a lot, that's a lot of things, isn't it? And some of those things might feel good to the flesh. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, these are, are bad things. These are things that, that you're not going to produce spiritual fruit with this. And really, if you're doing these things, are you even saved? Now, I do not believe that you can lose your salvation. I just don't. I believe that we are saved and we are sealed. Uh, and and there's, there's no losing salvation. E eternal life is a gift. And if, it, if we could lose it, it wouldn't be a gift. And it wouldn't be eternal life. But really, these things are going are to harm your walk with the Lord. And, and also, it's going to harm your, your testimony, isn't it? Now, verse 22 starts the contrast. And it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So these, these are the opposite of the, of the other list. Right? Now, we could talk about each one of these individually. I could explain them. But really, that's not the point of what I want to do today. I just want to give you a little bit of a snapshot about seed and about the fruit that can be produced based on the seed that you've planted. If you planted negative, uh, negative bad seed, you're going to get these, these works of the flesh. But if you're planting good spiritual seed, you're going to see 
in your life is going to grow the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Now, if we go to Ephesians chapter 5, turn a couple pages to Ephesians chapter 5, we will see in verse 9, For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. That fruit of the Spirit. You know, and, and the fruit, the type of fruit that you produce is based upon the type of seed that you're planting. If you're going out and you're producing and, and, and you're you're producing bad fruit, you, it's probably because you have planted bad seed. You've sown bad seed. You've sown in the flesh. You've sown in the flesh. Galatians chapter 6, if we go back to Galatians, a couple pages forward. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So sowing in the flesh will reap corruption. You know, there is a consequence for the type of seed that you're planting. Do you want to be the wheat? Do you want to be the good stuff? you want to be the wholesome stuff, the stuff that's genuine? Or do you want to be a tear? Do you want to be a weed? Do you want to be something that's not good for anything? I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. I want, I want to plant seed anywhere I go. That's what I want. I, I want to plant good seed. I want, I, want to, I want to produce the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I want. That's what I desire in my life. You know, sowing in the flesh will reap corruption. Sowing in the spirit will reap reward. And you know what? You can usually tell a person's walk by looking at their fruit. If you want to know if something's walk, if someone's walking closely with the Lord, if somebody's uh, 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 staying in the spirit, if somebody's reading their Bible, if somebody's uh, praying every day, you'll know. You'll know who these, those people are. Some folks just talk the dog. They just talk the talk. But you know what? If you talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. And also make sure that your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Praise the Lord. So the first point is, what seed are you sowing? We know that if you want to produce good fruit, you need to sow good seed. If you want to produce bad fruit, if you want to produce fruit that's, that's, that's rotten and wicked and horrible... And, and, and as a ruining of your testimony, then yeah, go out and, go out and sow fleshly seed. Sow in the flesh. The second point is, are you awake? If we go back to our text in Matthew, let's go back to our text in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And if we look at verse 25, it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. While men slept. Did you know that the devil likes to attack when your guard is down? You know, it's, it's so easy to get an attack. You know, and it comes at times when, when maybe you're not walking so closely with the Lord. It comes at a time when maybe you are asleep spiritually. Uh, when maybe that guard is down. When, when, um, when maybe you're not praying as often as you should, when maybe you're not reading your Bible like you should, when maybe you're not producing that fruit that you should. You know, that, that's, that, that's the time when the devil's going to attack you. You know, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians for a moment here. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Now this is talking about a spiritual awake, being spiritually alert. This is not talking about you're not allowed to go to bed, you're not allowed to have a nap. Yes, our bodies, we need rest, we need to sleep. We need a certain amount of sleep each night to, to be healthy. But this is talking about a spiritual application. 
You know, that, that devil, he, he's, he can be very seductive. And he will appear as an angel of light. He will, he will appear. He'll be a wolf, but he'll be in sheep's clothing. You know, that's why every single day I start my day off by saying, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. James says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask of God. You know, and that's what I try to do every single day. Lord, give me wisdom to face whatever situation might arise today, especially at work. You know, the work that I do, I need a lot of wisdom because I'm dealing with a lot of, of bad things, a lot of evil, wicked things at work. And so I'm constantly praying for wisdom. I'm constantly praying for discernment. I'm constantly praying to have my eyes open. I'm constantly praying for protection spiritually and physically as well. So are you awake? You know, spiritually don't let our guard down. Spiritually don't let our guard down. You know, you know how to know if something's evil, you know how to know if something's not of God, is you know what the book says. You know what the Bible says about things. You know, back in the, uh, in the old days, back in the, the time of the apostles, they didn't have a completed Bible like we do today. So they needed signs and wonders. And when those signs and wonders were happening, there were always Jews present. But today, we have the completed scripture. We can turn and see what God's opinion on such and such a thing is. So we need to, 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 to walk closely with the Lord. We need to be reading our Bibles. We need to be praying. We need to be asking for protection and for wisdom and for discernment and, and all of those types of things because we need to be protected. I don't want to let my guard down. I don't want the devil to attack me. I don't want the devil to sow tares among the wheat in my life. I don't want to give the devil the opportunity. You know, in our, in our passage, if we look at our passage in Matthew... It wasn't the good people. It wasn't the good people that planted those tares. It says um, in verse uh, 25, it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So it was the enemy that did that. It wasn't them. The enemy crept in when that guard was lowered. Uh, when they were when they were at a time where they were vulnerable, uh, when their guard was down, that's when the enemy came in and started started planting that bad seed. You know, you ever heard that expression, "Give an inch and take a mile"? Well, that's much like the devil. I don't want to give place to the devil in my life. I don't want to give the devil a foothold in my life. I don't want an opportunity for the devil to come in and, and, and sow tares among the wheat that I'm trying to plant. The third point, the third point is, are you ready for harvest? Are you ready for harvest? If we look at our passage here in Matthew 13, and we look at verse 30, verse 30 says, let both grow together until the harvest. Let both grow together unto the harvest. You know, the wheat and the tares, they can be undistinguishable. They, they can be hard to determine as this, is this genuine? Is this the real wheat or is this a tear? Is this something real or is this just a weed? Is, is this something real or is this something counterfeit? And we see a lot of counterfeit Christianity today, don't we? It, we're in the last days, I do believe. And there, there are times where the devil is using well-meaning, sincere people who have lowered their guard to do his work. To do his work. You know, I, I was watching... Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a documentary put out by Spencer Smith on uh, the third Adam, the third Adam, and really, really interesting stuff there. And, and when you watch these documentaries, I forget how many parts there are, but uh, you'll see some of that counterfeit in there. You'll see, and he exposes some of the tears in, in Christianity and in churches because people are letting their guards down. Instead of, of following after the word of God and following after truth, what are they doing? They're following after an experience. They're following after an emotion. They're following after a feeling. They're following after something that they believe is of the spirit, but really it, it's just the enemy deceiving them, trying to sow tares in their life. 
That's all it is. That's all it is. You know what? There's going to come a time when God is going to harvest the wheat and the tares will be cast away. God will harvest the wheat, those true believers, and the tares will be cast away. Let's close here in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And we'll see this. Matthew chapter 7. What happens? What happens? <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 to 23 says, Many will say unto me in that day, this is talking about um, the judgment, the, the great white throne judgment. This is not talking. This is not talking about the judgment seat of Christ. This is talking about the great white throne judgment. This is talking about when, when God judges righteously those lost, wicked people. Because here are lost, wicked people. And, and verse 22 says, Many will say unto me in that day, that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we uh, cast out devils? In thy name have we done many wonderful works? Notice how it's all about what they've done. It's not, there's nothing about the blood here. There's nothing about the gospel here. There's nothing about the fruit of the Spirit here. There's, there's nothing about uh, uh, the, the cross and Calvary here. It's all about what we've done, what I've done. Look at the things that I've done. Notice that? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So here are a bunch of tares looking to be harvested. What is Jesus going to say to them? Depart from me, I never knew you. Not, I knew you and then I didn't. I don't believe it's possible to be saved and then unsaved. I believe that once you're saved and you're sealed, yes, there are a lot of, of saved people out there that are producing some pretty wicked bad fruit. And they're, they're sowing some pretty wicked bad seed. But really, these tares that were never of the harvest, they were never wheat. They were always tares. They were always a weed. They were always bad. They never trusted. They never believed. The tares looking to be harvested, Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. So my question to you today in closing is, are you awake? If you are, go plant some seed. And once you've planted your seed, wait for the harvest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we are so thankful for your, for your spirit. We're so thankful for your word. We're thankful for the cross, the blood. We're thankful for salvation. Lord, and I just want to pray, God, that with this message, I pray, Lord, that you will uh, help us to reflect upon our own lives. And, and I just pray, God, that, that we will uh, be cognizant of what seed are we planting? What fruit are we producing? Lord, I, I want to I sow good seed. That's what I desire. I don't want to sow tares. I don't want to sow weeds. I don't want to sow corruption. I want to sow good spiritual seed, Lord, that's, that, that's ready for harvest, Lord. And I just want to pray, God, uh, that you will give us wisdom, that you will protect us spiritually. Let us not drop down our guard. Let us be sober. Let us be vigilant, Lord. And I pray, God, for that spiritual protection upon us, Lord. And now as we go about our week, I pray you will be with us. Protect us, lead us, and guide us. And be careful to give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me today. And until next time, God bless.